Hello and welcome. I'd like to introduce Dr. Holly Campo. She is a professor of sociology and criminology at the University of Alberta. Holly's major research focuses include justice reform, organizational culture, and public policy. Engaging in fieldwork and qualitative methods, Holly has examined police citizen interactions and organizational cultures in policing. Thank you so much for taking the time to chat. Holly, you're currently a senior researcher with the Global Justice Lab. Why don't you tell us a little bit about the work you've done with the Monk School of Global Affairs? Great, yeah. So that's right. I'm a senior researcher with the Global Justice Lab, which is, of course, housed in the Monk School of Global Affairs and Public Policy at the University of Toronto. And we really call ourselves a hub for research and collaborative inquiry across various dimensions of justice and with an international orientation, which is key to the Monk School's philosophy. We work with justice organizations to help practitioners just generate insight on how to meet challenges that they face. So sometimes that means just building connections with other practitioners and peers in this space to compare perspectives or just like build networks of support. And then other times that means sending a group of researchers and students to these organizations to collect data. For instance, the project that I have been deeply involved with at the Global Justice Lab since 2017 is about experiences of policing in cities that are getting into trouble for how law enforcement treats its citizens. So, you know, of course, some of the most significant policy tensions in the justice system have really recently centered on police use of force. The Global Justice Lab was commissioned to speak with people who have been detained by police. And so we interview them within 24 hours of their arrest. So we've done about 150 interviews in Cleveland and about 100 in Baltimore. And we completed policy reports for the monitoring teams in each city. So it's just really about providing that unique insight into the experiences and perceptions of police conduct, you know, hearing directly from people who have this criminal justice contact. So outside of the Monk School, are you currently working on any independent or collaborative research projects? Yes. So outside of this project, I... Well, it was actually because of this project that I thought about this next research that I'm working on, that which has, of course, been uh, stalled because of COVID. Yeah. So I thought to myself, you know, we need to hear from these same people in Canada outside of this context of extreme circumstances, right? So I mean, these are cities where the Department of Justice has literally called the police threats to the public. Um, which is just wild. <laughs> we need to hear from the people who have this direct contact experience with police, arrest experiences in particular in Canada, and just in terms of the routine policing that happens in our cities. I pitched the project to a few police leaders, particularly leaders in Canadian cities that are really forward thinking and can, can hear the pitch from a researcher who insists that these community satisfaction surveys that they're doing are not actually reaching the people who have the most criminal justice contact. Right. Um, Right. So these, you know, our police departments do these municipal community satisfaction surveys. And, and that's not the people that you hear from in these surveys. I now have a new Shirk Insight grant to come into these cities. I've got three cities that are part of that project. And I'll be interviewing people within 24 hours of their arrest and just learning how they experience that moment, how they experience that criminal justice contact with reference to the specific arrest, but also more broadly, because the people mm-hmm. sitting in you know the jail cells of our cities are also the people who call on the police the most, given what we know about victim offender overlap. And then I'm also going to be interviewing police officers in those cities. And ultimately what I'm after is understanding that dual perspective of the police citizen interaction in moments like an arrest moment that have pretty serious implications for both the individual who is being detained and how police officers understand their work on the front line. 
You have experience teaching numerous courses here at the U of A. Which class or seminar is your favorite to teach? That for me is a hard question. Um, <laughs> I am really grateful to have the opportunity to teach what I think are some of the best courses in the criminology program from the big intro criminology 225 course, because the best thing that you get to do is just myth bust all day long, right? You're, you're talking to students who for the first time are learning about crime and criminal justice, and they come to class with so many preconceived notions about crime and criminal justice in our society. And, and so many of them are, are myths. And so you get to do a lot of that myth busting. And that's, that's always so cool to see those moments of aha or whoa from students who are just learning about your discipline for the first time. So that's great. But I would have to say that my favorite course to teach is my new course, which is a policing course. I just taught it for the first time this past winter, uh, because really this is where I feel not only am I deeply embedded in the literature and I can stay so on top of what's new and uh, what's relevant, but I can also draw on some of my own research and really bring research informed teaching into the classroom. And also, of course, policing as a topic is hugely important right now. You know, this is front and center of the media and people are really asking tough questions about policing and police reform. So I guess I'm going to have to go with my, <laughs> with policing being my favorite. So for you, what does the CCR offer to the fields of sociology and criminology? Well, for me, the major draw of a place like the CCR is the space that it offers for community engaged research, yes, but while also being housed in a department with a solid reputation for its academic pursuits. You know, it really doesn't have to be about research with an applied or academic dimension. The beauty of a place like the Center for Criminological Research is that these goals come together here. You know, you have scholars and, and faculty members who are involved in the teaching and the mentorship of the academy, who also have an eye on community or social impact or policy relevance of research. Just that you get to have a space that pays mind to both of these dimensions. So with the pandemic and all that has come along with it, uh, what are some of the things you've done to like, keep busy or is there anything you're looking forward to once everything opens up a bit more? Well, um, I have what people are referring to as a pandemic baby. So, <laughs> <laughs> right, so yeah. Um, yeah, so my daughter was six months old when everything shut down. Mm -hmm. uh, and so certainly parenthood and new parenthood has kept us very busy during the pandemic um, and just navigating those challenges of work and parenting that so many people have had to face mm -hmm. during this last year and some however many months it's been now. In terms of what I'm really looking forward to, I know it's kind of, it is cliche to say travel, but in light of, you know, having a kiddo now, that's something that we really want to experience with her and it's not something we got to do growing up. And so I think that that's a goal that we are really putting forward as, as parents. So we would really like to travel and travel with her. Um, but also just seeing family. We, of course, live on the other side of the country from our families. Speaking to that, what is your ideal trip or vacation? Yeah, for me, the ideal trip is one that combines history, beach, and food. So, <laughs> so that would be places like um, Italy. I'm French speaking, so I also really enjoy, you know, heading to parts of France and speaking French is also something that I would uh, like to teach my daughter too. So, mm -hmm. so anything that combines history, food and beach is definitely my ideal trip. <laughs> so do you have any pets? I do. I have my West Highland White Terrier, or Westie for short, <laughs> named Phoebe. Phoebe is 11 years old. We've had her since she was a, a puppy. And so oh. she is absolutely a member of the family. You know, she's, she's wonderful. And for me, you know, going through grad school, writing a dissertation, she was there every step of the way. Well, thank you so much for your time. Thank you.